Hello there and welcome to another cryptocurrency review. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be talking about a fairly new cryptocurrency which is starting to get a little bit of attention from the crypto community. This is a project which I really like and I'm excited to get into and explain to you what it is. And this project is none other than Enigma or Enigma Catalyst. And so with all my videos, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I'll put these headings down in the description box below with some timestamps next to them so you can click on that timestamp if you only want to see a specific portion of the video. That said, I'm not a financial advisor and this is just for education. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so first things first, just like always, what is it? Well, Enigma, it, Enigma Catalyst, I should say, has two parts to it, and the first part is Enigma. And Enigma is a platform which allows for the decentralized storage of private data. This is a second level privacy solution. So it's comparable to something like the Raiden network or Plasma or something similar to that, or the Lightning work, network. Um, so parties can store and run computations on the data without being able to view it unless the blockchain allows it. So they can do calculations, but the data is still private even though they can run calculations of it. So you never, you can use the data, but you never get the raw data that people provide. The only person who gets access to the raw data is the person who provides the data. It, when I say if it, it's only if the blockchain allows it, it's only if the parent chain allows it. So like I said, it's a second layer solution. So for example, if it was put onto Ethereum, Ethereum, the Ethereum blockchain would have to allow it to the data to be seen before it, people could actually see it. Also, Enigma enables individuals to offer valuable data sets to the quants, uh, quantitative analysts, in exchange for Catalyst tokens. And so Catalyst is actually a separate thing. It's a quant trading interface, so a quantitative analysis trading interface that has the ability to trade, to build trading strategies and interact with multiple exchanges. So this, this cryptocurrency in platform really goes into things like hedge funds, which is a really, really big thing. And with hedge funds, it sort of makes Enigma comparable to like the Bloomberg of the blockchain, if you're familiar with what Bloomberg does. So what happens is data curators will provide premium data sources for traders and then the traders can then create their own hedge funds on the platform and then investors will look at the different hedge funds on the platform and then they can invest in what they perceive to be the best performing hedge fund on the platform. So it's like a one-stop shop for data curators, traders and investors. Okay, so now on to some of the features. And the first one I want to talk about is privacy because it's really one of the biggest things, if not the biggest part of the whole Enigma Catalyst platform. And what it does, it uses secure multi-party uh, computation and the data is processed in a distributed way. Then it's distributed and split between nodes. And then they, pro they will process functions together without giving the information to other nodes. So there's not one single point of failure or um, contact. So like that's the, I guess, the definition of decentralization and distribution. And specifically, no single party ever has access to the whole data, except they have a, just a small random piece of it. Um, like I said before, i.e. no one except the person who provides the data. Obviously, they will have the data because it has to come from somewhere, doesn't it? And the second part of the features I want to talk about is scalability. And this is one of the, like, the two big parts, uh, privacy and scalability for this whole platform. And in terms of scalability, the decreased redundancy in storage and computations enables more demanding computations to be made over the network. And unlike in blockchain, computations and storage is not re replicated by every node on the network. So it's split across all the network to lower the node, uh, I guess you could say workload, in order to allow for more work to be done. And only a few select few nodes perform each computation over different parts of the data. So not every node over the network performs a single computation, but there will be like a select few, um, like sort of a branch of nodes which perform that computation and it will be split up between those two. For example, this was a good example I found online. If a group of people can provide um, access to their salary and to together compare the average wage of the group 
Each participant learns their relative position in the group, but they learn nothing about the other members' salaries. So they learn sort of about some calculations um, and manipulations of the data, but they never learn what the actual other raw data is. They just have this process data. And it should be made clear that this is only a motivating example. In practice, any program can be securely evaluated while maintaining the inputs a secret. So this is just one of many, many applications for uh, Enigma Catalyst. And I hopefully this analogy made it quite easy for you to understand. It's just really focusing on you can't see the raw data, but you can see the process data. Also, Catalyst is a decentralized exchange that supports cross-chain atomic swaps. So this is another thing, we've seen this with the Lightning Network and on other cryptocurrencies. And the company's solution can operate as an extension of the existing second layer solutions, such as the Lightning Network or the Raiden Network. So Catalyst and Enigma, even though people, I think, a lot of people think once you have that second layer solution like Raiden Network or Lightning Networks, you can't have anything else but you can actually add Enigma Catalyst to these existing networks. So you could have, for example, Rider Network on the Ethereum network to enhance scalability. And then on top of it, you could add to the Rider Network, you could add Catalyst and Enigma in order to add even more scalability and add that big feature of privacy. So that's a really big cool thing, which I really love about Enigma. And using this design, Catalyst allows users to make fast cross-chain transfers without releasing their assets to a third party. So it's a trustless system. So why is it useful? And for a couple of reasons, I've already sort of talked about them uh, while I was explaining the features, but a lot of, firstly, lots of blockchain applications don't need to be private, I want to say that but a large amount of them do because a lot of them deal with sensitive information um, that people don't necessarily want being released to the public even though it's not really easy to track say like on a public ledger like bitcoin you obviously don't have a name there but you could find methods of tracking it if you tried hard enough or if you had the amount of resources and so this sensitive information is just simple things like your personal details your financial information slash history and your location history so just things that people generally don't want people to know and sort of things which pe people come into this space to try and protect themselves from being exposed to. Also, it keeps the data decentralized, which is a big thing. A lot of uh, second layer scaling solutions and other second layer solutions, really, they keep the all the data on um, centralized uh, exchanges or centralized servers and nodes, which really makes security a big issue for it. Uh, even though they're getting more scalability, the, the security issue um, and linked to that, the privacy issue is one of the big things which Enigma and Catalyst aims to solve. So some of the use cases for Enigma Catalyst, and these are just a, fur, a few examples. Keep in mind that this is just a short list and I'm sure as we especially get developing more with blockchain technology and the Enigma Catalyst technology, we'll find a lot more uh, technologies and use cases which we can apply this to. And so some use cases I have here is a personal data marketplace, identity services, the Internet of Things, genealogy, AI, healthcare and financial services, for example, lending. And that leads me on to my partnerships with this thing, with, this, um, with these use cases, I should say. We have partnerships currently with ETHLens, so there's that financial services going into play. We have the Kyber Network, Ether Delta, and ION. So these are all other fairly no, well-known cryptocurrencies and platforms within the space. And to have these partnerships early, really early on, such early on, I should say, is a really good sign for Enigma. So the team in the community behind Enigma Catalyst, and the community... Um, this has been very rapidly growing. These numbers would actually be bigger now, I'm sure, by the time you're watching this video. But this, keep in mind, this is only a, um, a very new cryptocurrency and it already has, obviously, it, it already had 40k at this point when I'm filming this video. But when you're watching it, it's probably grown even more and this is just such good community growth, especially if you look at the community behind it they're all really supportive of it and really passionate about the project and that's a really good thing and shows the quality of the community. And in terms of the team, 
that is something this is something which I really really like um, it's kind of one of to be honest it's one of the best teams in terms of experience that I've ever seen in my life we have a team really mostly comprised of MIT uh, MIT grads and really high people high up in the MIT sort of program and system and if you take a look at any of these guys LinkedIn profiles you see what they've done and we can see here some like some examples of what they have achieved and the companies which they've worked at for example McKinsey and Co but the one person that I'm really excited about for all this is Professor Alex Pentland and if you don't know who the, he is he is also from MIT, he's a director at MIT. And as you can see here, Alex is really, he's quite an all-star. He's been a founding member of advisory boards for Google, AT&T, Nissan, and the UN Secretary General, as well as receiving countless raps and awards, as we can see here. If we look up all these different pages and websites and awards, we can see some very, very big names in a lot of industries, especially the technology industry. And so for me, the team, that I'm really excited about the team for Enigma, and they seem to be delivering quite well on their promises in terms of updates. And so buying and storing Enigma, first off, storing, at the moment, it's only a very new cryptocurrency, keep in mind, but really the only places I could find are on my Ether wallet, like the only good places that I could recommend are my Ether wallet. And saying that, I would recommend if you do have a Legend Nano S, put it on the Legend Nano S as my Ether wallet um, has had a couple of times been hacked, but uh, besides that, putting it on a uh, putting on a web wallet is really nowhere near as safe as putting it on a hard wallet, as I always tell people. And in terms of buying Enigma, um, you got really the two exchanges that I'll be looking at: uh, Bittrex and Binance. So most of the people in this space, if you've been in here for a while now, you would be on one of these two exchanges. Um, however, we have had a lot of people trying to sign up for Binance especially. They've just broken a volume record for the largest exchange, I think, I think it was yesterday actually. So um, most people are on this exchange which gives it nice good liquidity. However, I would like to see it on some other exchanges, especially some exchanges over in like Korea for example because they really are active when trading and it would be really good for the price. Now, in terms of the future of XNG or Enigma, and they have released sort of like a roadmap. And first off, this isn't on the roadmap, but they are making a uh, makeover to their website, um, which, I mean, they, they don't have a bad website at all, but a, web, a, a makeover is not, uh, not really a bad thing. So I don't really mind too much for that. But if I scroll down here, we can see that they've got a few phase phases that they've got with their roadmap and the first phase they can see is really sort of laying the foundation for their platform with the on-chain data uh, contracts and a data repository then phase two that by the way they haven't actually released proper dates for this yet but I would expect it some this to be sometime over the next year or two um, so phase two would be like an off-chain network and then Byzantine fault tolerance based uh, consensus. And if you know what, you'd know what Byzantine fault tolerance is if you've watched one of my list, I mean my Neo video, actually, I'm sorry. And phase three, we can say, we can see different things like sharding and proof of state consensus. And then phase four, we can see hardware implementation, things like that. And I'm sure other things will be added to the roadmap as time goes on. So my thoughts on Enigma, and really I think this has huge potential because one, it's in a niche with little competition, both Enigma and Catalyst. The platform looks to develop uh, dApps in development now on the platform and then in the future become the cornerstone of the decentralized web. And this is going to be something which is really going to come into play a lot over the next, I guess, maybe five to ten years. Um, and we see things like Substratum and other projects popping up to uh, really combat these net neutrality repeals which have been taking place.
Also, Enigma Catalyst really tackles two of the biggest problems which have been uh, in the cryptocurrency space for quite a while. And one is a sort of cryptocurrency wide problem and that is scalability. And this is really the hot topic. It's been the hot topic for the last couple of years and I'm sure will be hot topic for the next few years. And I think people, we need to find good ways to get scaling solutions, whether that be first layer or second layer. But the thing which Enigma has, uh, besides obviously Catalyst um, in the ability of to do complete things like hedge funds and all that, it has the ability to do computations with data privately. And this is something that no one else has really thought of. And so I'm really, really optim uh, optimistic on the future of Enigma and I'm really looking forward into seeing where the project goes. Okay, so time for a bit of technical analysis, just a little bit, especially considering this coin is so new. Um, and we can see here, like, as I said, it's new. It's only been on for about, what's that, six weeks. So we've had quite a lot of growth in six weeks. Keep that in mind. Um, but we can see here, first off, we have had like three major legs up. And we have this big one here, our initial one. And then we've had one here and then one here and we're sorting sort of starting to settle off and we can see if we look at the volume we can see down here we had a very very large volume on the first spike and then we had a smaller probably about half the volume on the second spike and then on the third spike well it wasn't really a parabolic spike like these two but it was still a leg up no um, nonetheless and we can see the volume is getting shorter and smaller every time we go up and this is uh, people might think this is bad, but the fact that it's not um, it's not going down too quick off this little volume is a really positive sign. And it means people are actually holding this coin. They're not trying to sell it off and scalp their profits. So once um, this platform gets really out there and gets a lot of interest, I'm sure the uh, supply to demand will be very very um, well much much lower I should say than it has been previously because people are looking to hold this coin for the long term and also we can see in the short term we've got quite a bullish descending triangle here which we looked like we possibly might break out of over the next few candles so we're just gonna have to wait and see what that does but um, also in terms of the MACD and the RSI the RSI we've got a little bit to run on and the MACD we're looking to get a golden cross pretty soon. So I'm pretty bullish on it considering those few facts. And uh, have I bought any? Yes, I have. I bought some in this sort of support uh, resistance zone, I should say, and accumulation phase here. And then I bought some more down here. And I advise if you are going to buy any to get a use a dollar cost averaging strategy as it is a really good way to maximize return and reduce risk. But for my personal opinion, I really give this coin a long term hold as I really, really like the project and, and what it's trying to achieve and where it's going. And especially for such a new coin, it's showing a lot of promise. One of the things I really want to talk about and mention is it's not a negative that I'm talking about here, but it is something to keep in mind. Even though that I love the project, there are a lot of second layer scaling solutions and other solutions coming out uh, help trying to solve the problems which are uh, faced by cryptocurrencies today. And it's really, I think, it's going to be a race to see who really gets adopted first by one, the cryptocurrencies themselves and the mainstream people. So that being the cryptocurrencies that get adopted by the people. And really, Enigma is going to be a race in a race against time. It does do other things that other scalability solutions don't do, like the privacy and the catalyst features of it. However, they will have to. The devs will really have to keep on their toes and keep development going really quickly in order to beat the other platforms and solutions. That said, I have very, very high hopes for the future of Enigma, and I will be looking to stock up on every dip that I can and put it into my long-term holding portfolio. So that'll wrap it up for this video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below and comment on another cryptocurrency review you would like to see me do in the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit it below and I'll catch you next time.